Kennan, you need to get this. This is the flamethrower palm. All right, man. I'm sold. I love it. Look at the leaf. They're so prehistoric. They get like 20 feet tall. That's really cool, man. Thank you. You know what? It's actually 20 bucks. 20, 20 bucks? bucks? How many are you buying? <laughs> no, are you serious? Yeah. 20 bucks. That's awesome. I'd, I'd be down with a bunch of those. They're just, I like the color. I'll get 10. Can you put 10 on my order? Cool. That's awesome. How many do you want, Kenan? I don't know. How many you want to give me? All right. You once said you sometimes can pay in turtles. Yeah. We could trade off some turtles. So sure. do, you, do you want 10? Yes, if you could take turtles for currency. 20. All right. 20 of these. Brother. Look at the bat plant. Whoa. The black flower. Bat flower. That's really cool. That's my joke of the day. There you go, people. So, so Kenan, you said to me that um, that you you want to have your place look a little bit like my place, right? But I want my place to look a little bit like your place. Well, How, meaning with the animals. With the right? animals. How do I become like a Camp Kenan? Honestly, I think you're. I, it's taken me 20 years to build out my place, and I'm clearly not done yet. But I think what I see with yours is you just need to you know, identify the species that you like and then incorporate them into uh, what you've already built. And so you're going to be building little uh, barriers to keep them in. Uh, I really see those ponds you have as an incredible area to really kind of develop. So I really would love to see you create these kind of flowing uh, or freeform shaped enclosures, create these little micro habitats, if you will, uh, within the grander macro environment that you've created in, in Holt Gardens. Mm. So um, what I'm trying to emulate is, hey, look, I have a botanical garden. And oh, by the way, there are these beautiful animals walking around and living and enjoying it. Um, and I think that is where you're going to really soar because of your knowledge of the plants and the aesthetic that you have. Um, that's what I. That's what my hope is for my place and for your place. To be perfectly honest, you know. You did a video. Your five favorite tortoise, or your five, yeah. right? The cicada. Yep. The red foot. Did, did you have elongated on that? List? I did. Do, they. I have kept them. They're very good. They're easy. Uh, they do well in Florida. Can take the cooler temperatures. Oh, you had Burmese Burmese stars. Burmese stars are beautiful, and Burmese mountain tortoise is another great species you should look into because they live in a forested type situation, high humidity, can take cooler temperatures. Um, these are animals that are going to be hardy where you live in Central Florida. You know, if you get down into the 20s or oh, 30s, no, 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 no. It, they all yeah. got to go in. Okay. But but if you're in the 50s and 60s, uh, you're going to be less. Um, less stressed moving your animals. As long as you have a lot of leaf litter, uh, they'll do fine in that regard. You know what I mean? Like they'll burrow into the leaves and maybe just a gentle heated shelter for them, things like that. But I think, you know, your passion is, is there. Um, it's just a matter of creating these habitats that match what you've done with the, the, the plantings, with the garden. So you really don't want to go you know, you don't want to chintz it on the animals because they're living things and they're, you know, uh, they need the space, they need the environment. And you don't want to chintz it on the aesthetic that you've created that's so impressive that, I, uh, that drew me to uh, work with you. By the way, that's a pretty big cycad right there. That's a Sega. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's amazing. That's nice looking. Holy smokes. Cool. I just love plants now. Yeah. Can you believe it? You got me hooked. Mm -hmm. But I know my machine will be able oh, to lift that. I like this. It. I like this Petrardia. Oh, that's amazing. It's like everywhere you turn, there's just something else that's beautiful. Yeah, everywhere you turn, there's a new plant. Um, these trees, you know, traveler's palms. All this. Show specials. A Queensland bottle tree. This is from Australia. That's cool, too, huh? I got two of these. You do not. Yeah, from him. I bought them from him. Get out of here, really? No way. I've had people stop their car and say, what plant is that? And so how much is a tree this, do you reckon? I, I think that's, well, one size smaller, I think it's 600. It's gotcha. not a cheap tree. This is a cool one. I like this one. Look at that. That's the tree that says, don't eat me. What's, so when I see show special, that's on sale? 
It's 40 bucks, the other one, that one's 45 right now. No, Kevin! 45 bucks. I did buy some turtles and tortoises when I made this video, but I did not buy them from Kenan. I bought them from the Daytona Beach Reptile Expo. All the animals you're about to see is owned by Holt Nurseries. I am not visiting any zoo today. I was told that if your leopard tortoise has been born and bred in the state of Florida, that it can handle our higher humidity. And I hope this to be the case. The Salcada tortoises, I got three baby Salcada tortoises. To feed these baby turtles, I have bought both baby turtle food and frozen bloodworms. These two turtles are my pink snapping turtles. I don't know what turtle this is. I bought it at the reptile show and I asked them to select one for me and they just put on the petri cup green. And I got a Mexican giant musk turtle, which is in need of a larger food idol. Uh, maybe a hunk of fish here. I also bought some Argentine horn frogs. I bought the green one, I bought the variegated one, and I bought the apricot one. Hi everybody, we are gonna feed all of our fish today. Our first choice is to always get a fish to eat pellet food, because it's the most nutritious. Second, we try to feed mullet, because that is a whole fish product. It, it has the fins and the bones and the innards and stuff like that. And then if we can't get the fish eat any of that stuff, we try krill or we try frozen tilapia fillets that we thaw out and cut up. Well, in this video, we are unable to show you us feeding all of the fish, but I'm going to show you us feeding a few of them. And this is the Wallago Atu. It's about 30 inches long. It's one of my favorite fish. This right here is the Phantom Red-Tailed Cat. I also own the Platinum Red-Tailed Cat, and I bought something as a Yellow-Tailed Red-Tailed Cat. The Yellow-Tailed looks very similar to Phantom. I think they may be the same fish. We're feeding here a Lynx Catfish, which is almost 30 inches long, another one of my Pride and Joy fish. The first one I ever bought was six to seven inches. I put him in a 125 and he died after two to three weeks. I was heartbroken. I waited several months and I tried again. I got two adult ones and I put them both in round 600 gallon tanks and they did much better. So I wanted to create a wildlife pond and have lots of animal life close to the edge of the water. So what I've done here is all around the pond, anywhere from two and a half feet to five feet, we pulled the liner back, we made an eight to one braid, we raked it smooth. We put six inches of soil in here. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fill this pond with maybe three or four inches of water, and then we're gonna put all native plants all around the edges. And we're gonna have a couple of places where we can go fishing. We left the edge of the liner exposed so that in case we have to lift the liner up, we can do that. After we're sure that the hydrology is just how we want it, we will bury the liner completely.
I've never done something like this before and I've never really seen anything like this. When I bought this property, there was a low spot here and it was filled with 1,000 little leopard frogs. And I came here, I dug a catfish pond, I put a liner in. There was no literal zone or whatever that zone is called where you go from the shore to the water and there was no frogs. I want to bring the frogs back and I want to have frogs and turtles and a lot of shorebirds and a lot of neat stuff. This right here will be a lily walk once again. So this will be a walkway through here. There'll be lilies off to the left. There'll be gardens. There'll be gardens over here on the right. I don't know if you can see this. This is already filled with tadpoles. I never see the frogs. I suspect that they're tree frogs. We have a lot of tree frogs here in Apopka. Whoop. Some, sometimes the soil's all soft there. Once again, all in here, I'll get all water plants. I'm gonna plant pickerel weed in here and Sagittaria in here, and it's gonna be awesome. Like I said, there'll be a couple of fishing points, and I imagine me coming out here and making videos and showing all the wildlife. Maybe I'll get a different type of camera so I can be a little bit of a wildlife photographer. Okay, what do you want to put in here in the pond? What kind of plant do you put in here in the pond? I'm going to put water lilies in the pond. Oh, that's not good. You make a lot of mess in here. That's not good. That pond is beautiful, but you put the lilies in here, man. Not do that. That's what we do, Caesar. No. We grow water lilies. That's not good. You have another kind of pond. You have one pond over there for the lilies. You said the pond over there. You have uh, two more over there. But this pond is beautiful for you put the lilies in here. Maybe you better put the pond piece. That's the more beautiful. We will see you next week and don't forget to like and subscribe.